Now let's welcome the next presenter, Mr. Kendin Ken, an accredited member of the International Society of Appraisers and a senior underwriter of Asset and Fine Arts for Circle Asia Limited. 接下来我们欢迎第二位讲者，艺术鉴价师简嘉鼎先生。Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so um, I would like to start off with uh, thanking the organizer Art Taipei for welcoming back for um, the talk about introduction to professional art appraisal. So uh, let me start off with talking a bit about my background. So yes, I'm the um, a member of International Society of Appraisers. I'm from Hong Kong, but my day-to-day -day job is in fact. In art insurance, so I started off as a claims handler, and then a surveyor, and now I'm an underwriter. So, and I've been doing that for the past six years. And before that, I was a director of operations in an antique and fine art gallery in Hong Kong. Let's start with a very simple question: What is art appraisal? Simply put, it's an opinion of cost or value. And in Black's Law Dictionary, that's in fact a very good definition, which says that it is a valuation or an estimation of value of property by these interest persons. So this person doesn't have like a interest in the property; he's not going to profit for it, at least at the time of the appraisal, of suitable qualifications. So that person would have gone through training in order to be qualified as an appraiser. And it further states that it is a process of ascertaining a value of an asset or liability that involves expert opinions. So that it go through some sort of evaluation rather than explicit market transactions. I think it would be interesting to um, you know let you guys know what urged me to go into study to become an art appraiser. So I was um, the claim handler about three years ago. A claim came to me, which is a Chinese auction house client, a consignment, a Song Dynasty vase, porcelain vase consignment was damaged during the uh, can custody. So that claim came to me, and then because at the time in Hong Kong we couldn't find a qualified appraiser, so what we decided to do is with the cons with the uh, auction house, of course, is. Um, to find two antique dealers with relevant market experience and also knowledge, and then for them to look at the object separately, and then propose the loss in value, how much the damage will cause the loss in value, and at that time, we didn't ask for you know any justification or any reasoning for them to that, and at the end, they. Came up with the same exact high degree of depreciation level. To be honest, it was 90% of loss in damage, and the da and in fact, it was only a 8 cm hairline crack to the base of the um, vase. So at that time, we were all kind of like struggling, and then like, how did they come up with the the value and all that? There's just like no reasoning given. So. At that point, it sort of like driven me, you know. It is important. I wanted to know is there a way out there that would be able to provide an independent, a transparent appraisal process that would leave like no party confused or suspicious. So that research led me to the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, called USPAP, and this is. From the U.S. originally, so USPAP is issued by the Appraisal Foundation, uh, which reports to the Congress in the U.S. and it's an authoritative document that covering the practice, the standards of appraisal, and it is a minimum set of standards that provide the appraiser with guidelines for performing professional appraisals. So what it requires is it requires. The report will have a clear description of the property being valued, why it is being valued, and also a comprehensive explanation 
of the relevant facts regarding how the conclusions were determined. And also the final results and the final opinions and conclusions of the assignment. So this is a typical workflow of how an, an appraisal report was conducted. It always started with a client having a need. So um, it could be for they wanted to get uh, insurance cover or they simply wanted to, or if they offer a piece of artwork and then they just wanted an independent third person to justify whether that value being proposed to them is justified, okay? So they will approach an appraiser and then the appraiser will find out what I just mentioned, and that will become the intended use and the objective of the appraisal. And based on that, the appraiser will determine the scope of work, which is the markets that he'll go into researching, and also um, the level of research that's being conducted. For example, if it's just an, like, for example, an iPhone, then it could just be, um, you know, checking with the Apple store down the street. If it's a Jawu key painting, then you have to look at international auction markets, okay? And the appraiser should always inspect the property in person. So, um, hope like, um, it would be better if they're not just like through images that are sent through to them, but actually inspecting the property is, is important. And they will go back and then they will conduct research and finally, they will come up with the report writing. And this part, I'm going to talk about some factors that will determine the value of an artwork. Yeah, this, I think these are quite straightforward. So um, the creator, the artist himself, whether he is famous or important among art history, and period. Is the work from the artist important period or most significant period. For example, for uh, Jawu Ki and Picasso, there are some period that are more sought after. Um, the medium works on paper or canvas. Typically, works on canvas are more valuable than works on paper, for example. Um, size is important. Usually, um, a piece that is bigger would be more valuable than a piece that is smaller. But if it goes to become like an enormous sculpture, for example, and only you know certain household would be able to collect them, then the value would then again kind of like a curve, it will come back down a bit. And the quality, of course, the quality of the actual work is important. Um, the condition, um, has there been any damage to the, to the painting? Has it been restored? And the quality of the restore, uh, of the restore that's important. Um, provenance, has it been featured in any major exhibition or has it been in any important private collections or public um, collections. And rarity, obviously, if it's a unique piece versus if it's an addition print or an addition sculpture, that will affect the value as well. And art historical significance. If it is a piece that is um, part of the art history or part of like the artist's important office career, then they will um, signify that the, um, the value would would be higher. And the taste is also important. The taste I'm talking about in general, the, the environment. Um, for example, now, um, sort of like minimalism is more sort of um, um, the trend. Um, I remember back in the days, in the 90s, in my old gallery, uh, there was a lot of expats buying Tibetan furniture. But now, um, people prefer like a more like minimal household. And then basically, that market has just like gone. And commercial appeal, um, for example, if you talk about um, Takashi Murakami or uh, Yayuko Sama, cows, they're always in the media, they're always in the uh, like social media, actively in the social media, so that will also affect the value of them as well. So some simple um, background about like how a professional appraisal report should look like. It should, written, it should be written in an orderly and logical manner so there should be a free session. The first part is the cover. The cover should mention the who, what, where, when, why, and how about the assignment. And then the body will be the um, part that covers 
the item specific with clear description of each item being appraised. And then the final value conclusion, obviously, of each piece. And then it should also demonstrate that how the appraiser come up with this conclusion. For example, for high value item, we would really demand that there are at least three comparables being um, presented to justify the reasoning. And then finally, the addendum. The addendum should include it the appraisers' qualifications and also supplementary materials such as um, glossary or the artist biography. So this is an um, um, appraisal that I've done for a Xiang Yu painting um, for a uh, client a few years, um, couple of years ago. And I think from this you'll be able to see, um, for example, for each painting, I'll list the sales information. When was the sale? completed, the description with size and everything, and the value that was sold for, and also a picture. And on the far right-hand side, there will be notes. So basically saying that um, how it is similar or different from the piece that I was appraising. So that, um, let me take the top one for example. It is, it is the same materials, similar subject matter, similar year for creation, similar size but it's a darker color palette. So usually in the market, like a darker piece is usually not as appealing as a more colorful piece. So um, in this case, if I tell you without showing the picture, because obviously I need to you know, keep the privacy of the painting and the client, but if I tell you the final value conclusion I did for this piece was 12 million US dollars, I think you understand like how I arrived at that valuation. And this is what people have been talking about um, in the past months, basically, um, this Banksy painting. And I thought it would be an interesting exercise to sort of like let you guys know like uh, how I would do if I'm the appraiser being assigned to do, do this painting. Um, but because of the time, I don't think I need to go through um, like the background, right? Everyone would have known from the social media. So what is important is it, um, it was a um, a stencil on canvas painting, uh, which, which was eventually show, sold for uh, around one million pound in Sotheby's auction. And then basically this happened. When the hammer goes down, a mechanism in the frame shredded half of the painting. And then, yeah, I, I'm not going to go through too much detail, but I think the important part is a um, few days later, Sotheby's announced that they've obtained an official certificate from pest control, which is Banksy's uh, authentication body, saying that, you know, literally, it was a new work called Love is in the Bean. And Sotheby's press really said that it, it is the first work, first time a piece of live perform performance art and been sold at auction. And in the process of destroying the work, a new one was created. So it was actually um, Banksy or his sort of like complex like in the auction house and did the remote control and then shred the painting. Uh, so it was sort of like the artist intended. And the buyer eventually bought the piece at the same price that was auctioned on the day. And then you see all this like news coming out saying that, you know, uh, it is worth more than the 1.4 million bid US dollars. And then the other um, news report even says that it doubled the original price. But, you know, as an independent appraiser, how would you approach this um, assignment if it was being presented to me? So I think. So obviously, I'm going to do the usual appraisal thing. I need to, uh, like I mentioned, I need to find out like the intended use and objective, whatever. And then I have to, I should do the research about the back, full background of the artist, the artwork, and the events. You know, just to prepare myself before actually going in and then inspect the artwork. The checking the condition is important because you know, and it has to match what is being mentioned in the cert and. Obviously, I also have to obtain a copy of 
all the documentations, the previous and the current um, condition report, the previous and the current cert issued by um, pest control, just to make sure that they are there, and also like the artwork is what they mentioned. And of course, I have to also obtain a copy of the transaction record to make sure that not just hearing from other sources, but to ensure that the sale actually gone through.